already had a preview of everything that um, I'm going to be talking about. Um, but the Central Ohio Diabetes Association is now an agency of Life Care Alliance, and we're really thrilled about um, working under our CEO, Chuck Gehring. So we um, are still at the Denison Avenue um, agency, um, office, and our agency serves people with diabetes. The main program that's being funded by the Arlington office, which we're very thankful for, is our camp program. Um, our mission statement there, and just a little bit of um, um, the things that we do at camp is that um, helping children with diabetes to learn to live well because of, unfortunately, it is a chronic disease, and they're um, working on a cure, but none in sight yet, and so we want these children to have a long and healthy, relatively complication-free life, and the only way they can do that is with the education and the support, and so that's um, how our camp hits our mission statement, and I think I might be in your guys' way, sorry. Um, some stats about diabetes, I won't beat you over the head with this, but um, just to show that diabetes, unfortunately, is very prevalent in our society. Um, our children that come to camp mostly live with type 1. The difference between type 1 and type 2 is type 1, the person's pancreas is not making any insulin at all, and so they have to get their insulin from an outside source, be that by an insulin injection through a syringe or a pen or the insulin pump. A person with type 2, their body still make an insulin, but it's either not enough or the body's not using it in the way it was meant to be used. And so about 99% of our kids that come to our camp program live with type 1. Um, so yeah, as you can see our numbers, we do do some other programmings at the agency that we're very proud of. We have an education program, we have a detection program, and then of course our youth program which our camp um, is under. And then um, we do have two day camp programs in addition to our sleep away program. Just wanted to mention those, they are uh, feeder systems into camp and all three camps are American um, uh, camp Association accredited, and we do belong to the International Diabetes Education and, and Camping Association. So it's great to be able to talk with other people who are doing um, diabetes camps throughout the country. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year with Camp Hamway, so we're really thrilled about that. We have some fun things planned. Um, our, little, our little guys are three to seven year olds. Um, they've been around, that camp's been around for 29 years this summer. And then our eight to 12 year olds, which is a day camp with an overnight sleep out, um, we're having a quarter of a century uh, anniversary this year for Stepping Stones. So we have some history underneath us with our camp program. And so our beginning um, we started off as Camp Spill a Little because back in 1968 there was no such thing as blood sugar monitoring. You did everything by urine testing. And so they'd say you're spilling a little sugar in your urine. Uh, uh, Dr. Fernald, who was the um, um, medical director since the conception of camp, did not like that name. And 50 <laughs> years later, he still doesn't like that name. I said, Dr. Fernald, since 1979, we became Camp Hamway. It's all good. And uh, Camp Hamway came from the name of Dr. George Hamway, who was an endocrinologist with the Ohio State University's Department of Endocrinology, and he was one of the founding fathers of the Central Ohio Diabetes Association. So that's where the name Hamway came from. Um, so a little bit about Camp Hamway, it is a sleep away. We do two weeks. We do a week for 13 to 17 year olds, and we do a week for 7 to 12. We won't take them, maybe we'll take a six year old, but we won't take them any younger than that just because if it's really scary for a sleep away for a child and it's terrifying for a parent, for these kids who have this chronic disease. But we want these kids to experience camp and just like a child with a working pancreas. So they're horseback riding, they're canoeing, they're doing archery. The older kids can go on a high ropes adventure course because we want them to know that diabetes should never stop them from doing anything they want to do. If we have to stop and check a blood sugar because somebody feels that their blood sugar's low, it's no big deal. And this is the one place in the world that these kids will be in the majority because they might be the only child in the school or they might be a girl, and the only other kid in school is a boy with diabetes, and she's not going to go talk to that boy. Um, and so this is the one place that these kids can relate to each other, and almost 90% of the program staff are alumni. So when I say it's time to check and inject, I don't live with diabetes, so I could check. I'm definitely not injecting, but the counselors are definitely doing that, and so they're great role models to these kids. Um, so yeah, we just want the kids to be kids. We want them to have that, that fun experience. So last year, 
We had 65 teenagers. We had six counselors in training and 68 junior campers. And juniors is our seven to 12 year olds. Those counselors in training are teenagers who are either going into their senior year in high school or they had just graduated. And they go through an entire week of intense leadership training. And then the second week they come back and then work in a cabin with that junior week. And we did have 55% of all of our campers receive some form of scholarship. Even the 500, last year the fee was $525. That's a subsidized cost. It costs the agency um, like 2019 per child. But because we get the insulin donated, because we get a lot of the food donated, we're able to provide a subsidized cost. So we're not charging each family $2,000, we're charging them 525. But even at that, 55% of our campers needed scholarships. And that's where the, the fund uh, the money from the um, King uh, Thompson, um, Cald sorry, Caldwell Banker King Thompson Foundation really comes into play is to help those families who can't afford to come to camp. Um, we did have 30, um, we had a, a really nice, um, kids from all over the state of Ohio can come, so we had a really nice representative from the state of Ohio. Um, and as I mentioned, the cost there, and no child has ever turned away due to financial dis um, um, financial difficulties. We have a whole slew of doctors and nurses and social workers and uh, program staff. Um, and uh, obviously we do um, intense uh, training for them. And here's some outcomes from camp. So even though we, we know that we want the kids to come to camp, we sneak in that diabetes education, we sneak in those learning um, um, teachable moments, but, and the kids are picking up on all that, so we can show the outcomes. You know, 86% of our kids, this is a self-report from the campers themselves, showed that they had an independence in their diabetes management. Um, what I, as a social worker, I love that 73% showed that they had an increase in their confidence and their self-esteem. And so you can see that 80% um, show that they accept living with a chronic disease more after coming to camp than they did prior to. And so a couple of the other uh, stats. And